friends, my name is Vani Ness and I want to start off this video by just saying how appreciative I am of everybody. My last couple of videos have received so much support and I just wanted to say thank you for supporting the content that I'm creating. Take a bit of a mushy minute and, and just let you guys know that I am very, very, very appreciative of all the wonderful feedback, the comments, the views, the shares. You guys are so great about sharing out my content and Thank you. So what this video is actually about, I am doing a series of videos where I'm wrapping up my reading for 2015 and just looking at different categories and then there will be some proper videos about stats and stuff when the year is actually through. One of the other things that I do about the internet is snarksquad.com. It's a website that I own that was started in 2011 and when we started that website the intention was to reread the books that we read as children with our adult eyes and just be critical about what we were reading in a funny way just because it was humorous to look back on the stuff that we used to love. Throughout that project and the other recapping things that we do, we really started to notice a few patterns in fiction and one of the things that we notice is the lack of parenting or else just like bad parenting that prevails in fiction. So we were reading things like Babysitter's Club, Sweet Valley High, and Goosebumps and we were just astounded by the negligent parenting. In that same vein, I took a look at all of the things that I read this year and I'm going to talk to you about the parents in those works of fiction. This is a little bit more loosely organized than my YA heroines video which I actually ranked because I looked at everything I read and there was a lot of times where I just could not remember anything about the parents in that book. And also like ranking different levels of child abuse felt weird. At the end I'll also be telling you my top three parents in fiction this year. First up, George Duncan from The Crane Wife by Patrick Ness. This story primarily follows George and we start one very strange night when a wounded crane lands in his backyard. He helps the crane out and it flies off but this starts a very strange period of his life. It marks like a, the beginning of something. Thing. And the very next day, a beautiful and unique woman walks into his shop and that's how the story gets started. We also follow George's daughter who is in the wake of a breakup and she's not dealing with it very well and she tends to alienate people but she's dealing with the fact that she alienated somebody that she really loves. By the end of the story, I was just so endeared to both George and Amanda who are flawed characters in their own right but there was something about them and about their relationship that just made me fall in love with them. If I remember correctly, George came across as a caring and attentive parent and he's just kind of a good guy. He's always described in the story as a good guy, just like a normal good guy. He wasn't the best parent in the world because I feel like him and his daughter weren't very close and some of that may have been because Amanda tends to push people away but for whatever reason there was a little bit of a gap between them. On the whole you could tell that he loved her and that he cared about her. Next, Hazel and Ben's parents from The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. The mom and dad in this story are artists and Hazel introduces us to them by saying things like gee, I'm sure glad we aren't normal, and giving off a general, oh, mom and dad kind of vibe. But the more you read about them throughout the story, the more awful they get. Hazel describes it as a benign neglect, but it was things like forgetting to pay bills and feed their children, all so they could paint a lot. Next up, The Wormwoods from Matilda by Roald Dahl. This is the first time I ever read Matilda, and I've seen the movie a lot of times, so I know that there was child abuse in this. Like, obviously, that is a prevalent thing, but there was something about Roald Dahl Dahl's writing that really brought it to the forefront. You could tell that throughout his story the entire theme of parenting was something that he was trying to comment on where I don't know if that truly came across in the movie. The focus in the movie was just the story of Matilda but in the book it's like abusive parenting. I mean, we all know that the Wormwoods are just awful to Matilda. She has to develop special mind powers to deal with it. Next up, Marilyn and James Lee from Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I love this book so much and it was just such a wonderful and complicated look at the lives of Marilyn and James and how that was projected onto their children. In the story, it really comes across that they have messed up their children basically by just being messed up people themselves. It's not that their parenting is necessarily bad because because they are intentionally trying to be bad but it's just because of who they are and their own faults that that kind of gets passed along to their children and in their parenting style. So that is basically the theme of the story is that this the story starts with Lydia's death. The first line is Lydia is dead. So we know that this young lady, this oldest child in the family is gone and what follows is just a look at how it all happened. How did it begin? And it really traces back to Lydia's mother and father, her mother 
and father and the kind of effect that we can have on our family and the people around us. Marilyn and James place too many expectations on Lydia. They never listened to their son, Nathan, and Hannah was so ignored that she, the story tells us that she was always living in nooks and crannies and hiding in places because that is how overlooked that she was. These two people are warring so hard against their past and against perception and against society that they don't see how that is effectively destroying their family. So I'm talking about all of these parents and some of them are bad parents within the story, whether that is part of the story or not, but in this book it is specifically what we are looking at throughout the story and honestly one of my favorite reads of this year by far. September's Parents from the Fairyland series by Catherine and Valenti. I've now mentioned this book in every of my wrap-up videos that I've done so far. Sorry not sorry. We don't spend any significant amount of time with September's parents but who they are and the situation that they're in plays very greatly into September's story. Her father is off fighting a war and her mother has gone to work because the women folk are working now that the men are, are fighting the war and September is very alone and we see projections of these things of September's worry for her father and her loneliness in her adventures in fairyland so it again it becomes a very important part of her story even though her parents are kind of in the background and I think it was very nice to explore this little girl coming of age in a time when her father is far away her mother is taking on this whole other responsibility and can't be there for September the way that September wants. Next we have the cons from Miss Marvel and I haven't mentioned many of the graphic novels I've been reading this year so far but I had to give mention to this. I know that a lot of people when they reviewed this they said that the cons came across very stereotypically but that didn't necessarily play out that way for me because I saw my family and my growing up experience reflected in this family so so much. Kamala Khan is a Pakistani American and her family is very traditional very overprotective but I just saw the overprotective religious family like oh my gosh it was just reflected so well and I think the way that they tried to avoid the stereotype is by making her family super caring. It wasn't like strict or mean it was just born out of a caring for Kamala and wanting her to be safe and do the right thing and I really appreciated that they took that route instead of like the angry parents or the strict parents. They were caring and kind. Yes they were traditional but that is part of her narrative and her story. Next we have Feyre's Father in A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. Feyre was basically Katniss at the beginning of the story. She's like going into the woods to hunt and her parent is absent because sad things have happened. So her father basically decided to stop parenting and stop humaning and that's where we start the story and then Feyre leaves and we don't really spend much more time with him. All the parents in Vicious by V.E. Schwab. All the parents are awful as far as I can remember. If I'm forgetting anybody who was not awful let me know down in the comments but there was this underlying theme of growing up with not the best parents. Eli's father was out and out abusive and we see throughout the story the kind of toll that it's taken on Eli himself. Victor's pastime is basically defacing the books that his parents have written. Sydney's parents are negligent and they basically ignore her and I think the lack of parental figures in the story is what makes this band of misfits come together in the end and why it's so satisfying to see them form their own little family even though they all have selfish motivations to band together and do that whole thing I think it was so satisfying for that reason because it was finally like them finding their people even if those people were technically not good people it's so fine Next up, Rosalie Madigan from The Green Road by Anne Enright. Rosaline is a very unhappy person and very passive aggressive and almost impossible to please. And what we see throughout the story is that her children are pulling away from her because of the person that she is. It's a credit to the story that by the end, I did feel bad for Rosaline because she's still lonely, even if she's the one that's pushing people away just by her manner of being. And we explore a lot about parenting and, and how it goes when you're a parent that you're with your kids and you do what you think is best and then in the end they can pull away from you and leave you alone. Cherry stuff. Next I have Charlie Swan from Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Okay so I read Twilight for the first time this year and I hated it because it was objectively awful but the only thing that was even close to being remotely not terrible was the fact that Charlie Swan still found it in his heart to 
care for and think about his daughter Bella. Even though she hated his questions, she hated his caring, she hated his job, she hated sharing a bathroom with him, she hated his presence. She probably hated his stupid face along with everything else in the world that wasn't Edward, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna eat you Cullen. And here are my top three. Abby and Red Witchshank from A Spool of Blue Thread by Ann Tyler. The children in this story certainly had things to say about their parenting style, but I think the most that can be said against them was maybe that they cared too much. Also, the children complained a lot, essentially because their parents were getting old. The parts within the story about the parents getting old really struck a chord with me. It's heartbreaking because in my age, my parents are still not that old, but thinking about the future and seeing them get older has always been something that I've struggled with, so reading this just gave me feels. Another thing that was explored here was the idea of having a more high maintenance child. They spend so much time worrying about Denny and the other children kind of resent them for that, but being good parents doesn't make you perfect parents and even through all of the squabbling and things that happen there was an air of warmth and love here that I really appreciated about the story and it kind of re revolves around the house that they grew up in but that idea of having a home and having a place to call home really goes back to how the parents raised them and how caring they were. Next I have The Pullmans from Wonder by RJ Palacio. This is a middle grade book about a boy born with a facial abnormality and he's going to school for the first time. We get the book from his point of view and just how he receives the attention positive and negative that other people give him but then we also switch to other people's point of view and see how they see him. His parents were so wonderful though and their love just permeates the story and other characters commented on on how the family dynamic is so wonderful and so loving and I love that that was such a thing that their unconditional love is really what cements the story. My number one favorite parents that I read about this year were the parents from Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sanz. Dante's parents were just so loving and wonderful and constant and they were just this presence of good throughout the story. Ari's parents struggled a little bit more but throughout that you knew that they loved him. They were just dealing again with some of their own personal issues that came across and that that Ari had to had to kind of deal with and learn to communicate with them about. In the end both sets of parents are so accepting and so loving and they help their children to realize who they are and become who they are. We talk about identity and sexuality and just mental health in some aspects here and there was a lot that was explored but I love that the underlying theme of family and a good family was present. I enjoyed reading about them and that's one of the reasons that I know that the story will stay with me. Let me know down in the comments if you notice parents more now that you're an adult and let's chat about these books if you've read any of them. Plus I want to hear who were your favorite parents of 2015. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Abby and Red Witchshank from A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Enright. No, Anne Taylor. Abby and Red Witchshank from A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Taylor. Tyler.